Hello, this is Dr. Eric Bricker and thank you for watching A Healthcare Z. Today's topic is the healthcare revolution is really like the industrial revolution. And by healthcare revolution, I want to put today's healthcare in historical context. And I promise I will try as hard as I can to not make this boring. But we need to remember that, and I'm going to say that the healthcare revolution really began in 1928 with the discovery of penicillin by Alexander Fleming in Great Britain. Because before then, we really didn't have any anti antibiotics, okay? Now, the first blood bank in the world was at Cook County Hospital in Chicago in 1937. And even then, it wasn't like widely used for decades. I mean, so like, we can only give blood transfusions not that long ago. Right? And then the defibrillator, actually, like, which has saved, obviously, countless lives by like, shocking the heart out of a, an abnormal rhythm back into a normal rhythm and saving the person's life, like, that was only used in like, a handful of hospitals in 1957, like well after World War II. Okay? So where I trained at Johns Hopkins, the founding internal medicine physician was this guy named William Osler, one of the most famous doctors in all of history. And he wrote the textbook on medicine, and this was in the very early 1900s, before 1928, so it's like pre-World War I. It was this huge medical text. It was all filled with diagnosis and almost no treatment. Because they could diagnose diseases back then, but there was almost nothing that you could do about it. So really when I say the healthcare revolution, this is actually the healthcare treatment revolution. We can actually do stuff now. It's amazing. It's awesome. Just, and it follows so many parallels to the Industrial Revolution, okay? So the Industrial Revolution is largely thought to have been between 1760 and 1914. Notice that's 154 years. It is a very long time. Okay, from 1928 till today, that's like about 90 years. So if anything, we're, like, we're not at the end of the healthcare revolution. If anything, we're kind of like maybe two-thirds of the way there, okay? And the Industrial Revolution was noted by tremendous technological change in terms of the steam engine and the internal combustion engine and then uh, the generation of electricity. And then the social reform all came later. Think about all the social reforms that came out of the Industrial Revolution. They didn't happen in 1760. They didn't happen until the late 1800s and the early 1900s. In other words, the technological change comes first, and the social change comes at the very end. So let's talk about some of those in the Industrial Revolution and their analogous situations in the Healthcare Revolution. Okay, so back uh, during the Industrial Revolution, of course, it was the age of trusts, of standard oil, of massive consolidation, just like we have consolidation in the world of insurance carriers, PBMs, and very large hospital systems locally as well. It was also the time of Tammany Hall and tremendous amount of political corruption and influence and buying politicians in America, just like we have political favor today, whether it be by the American Hospital Association or the American Medical Association or American Health Insurance Plans. So we see the quote unquote regulatory capture of the government by these healthcare companies. Next, we have unsafe working conditions. And something that we hear about in the news all the time is physician burnout. So arguably, the conditions that physicians and nurses and therapists are working in are unsafe for them. Now, it's not like physically unsafe, they're not getting their hands chopped off like they were in the Industrial Revolution, but it is mentally unsafe, and it's leading to higher rates of suicide. Okay, next up, we have Upton Sinclair and his famous novel, The Jungle, which exposed the unsafe practices of the meatpacking industry, and people were getting sick from eating just the awful meat products that were being produced. And so this was the era of muckraking journalism. Okay, likewise, so in other words, that was a very unsafe product. Likewise, healthcare in the form of medical errors has a very unsafe product. Okay, so now, what was the resolution during the Industrial Revolution? And that will help us then to predict what the resolution will be in the healthcare revolution. Okay, one, there were federal breakups of the trusts. Note, in my opinion, that is probably what is necessary in healthcare. Next up. In regards to the political corruption, there were investigations. So the regulators, they didn't necessarily have to change the regulations, but they had to increase the uh, number of uh, lawsuits, both civil and criminal, that came out of it. And then there was associated jail time, right? So the famous boss tweet of Tammany Hall, he went to jail, okay? So to a certain extent, maybe it'll take people going to jail. Okay, next up, 
then there actually was additional regulation as well, whether it be in terms of trial labor laws or in terms of, so that there was the, the Triangle Shirtwaist Fire, which was uh, in New York City, which was one of the uh, worst industrial accidents or uh, industrial fires uh, in history, and it resulted in changes in fire codes and additional workplace safety. Likewise, there are probably are going to have to be changes in workplace safety regulations for healthcare providers themselves. Okay, lastly, in regards to the um, muckraking journalism, we call that investigative journalism today, and it led to public outcry. And so people, those organizations had to change as a result of the public outcry. And so what does this tell us? This tells us that all of the things that we're seeing in healthcare today as it relates to, well, maybe not, we're not to the point of federal breakups, but in terms of greater investigations, in terms of change of regulation, in terms of these uh, journalism, that's all heading in the right direction. And the question is, okay, are we going to let it last 154 years? In other words, are we going to have another 64 years of this? Or can we accelerate it? And we don't need, in my opinion, we don't need to do anything differently. We just need to repeat the exposure. We need repeated exposure. We need repeated exposure of the consolidation of the trust, repeated exposure of the corruption and the political favors. We need uh, repeated exposure of the unsafe working conditions, and we need repeated exposure of the unsafe products. We need more, louder, more frequently from more sources. The playbook has already been shown to us from the Industrial Revolution. We just need to replicate it here in the healthcare revolution. And thank you for